Well, hello, welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we are now, for our very first time, oddly enough, we're in P-Town, Provincetown, and we're here with Carmen and Trevor. How are you both? Hi, y'all. We're excellent. I mean, it's it's quiet during Provincetown in the winter. Um, we go from around 60,000 in the summer during the high season to 3,500 locals during this <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can just, but it's kind of nice actually <laughs> i bet kind of kind of regroup and and uh and hunker down so you can focus on all the great things coming up here yeah uh, there's a beautiful we'll, balance to it all mm -hmm. <laughs> which we'll be chatting about but what's interesting is that um and so you're the executive director and associate director of the provincetown business guild and I don't know if everybody knows it, and it's very interesting, and I think it's unique because at first when I hear that, I just assume you're kind of an LGBT chamber of commerce and so forth. And I think you guys are, but you're so much more than that, right? Yeah, we, you know, we have sort of a, a unique structure as compared to another chamber of commerce. You know, officially, we, we are a member-based, not-for-profit 501c6, like most chambers, but the, the PBG was started in 1978. Um, there were a bunch of innkeepers that were interested in marketing P-Town specifically to LGBTQ plus folks yeah. and went to uh, the chamber at the time and asked them to start allocating dollars towards that segment. And they said no. So they said, well, OK, <laughs> um, we're going to create our own chamber, um, you know, like, like the, 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 the gays and lesbians of, uh, of that era needed to do. They took a stand, formed their own group. And in the first year, they generated Carnival. This is 1978, which has since become the largest event on Cape Cod with the Carnival Parade. Wow! No, I know it's uh, it's very interesting because then when uh, when I saw you all, um, we reconnected. Um, but I, when I at the New York Travel and Adventure Show, and so there was this LGBTQ pavilion, and I, the moment I walk in, you guys are right there, front and center. And uh, first, even before everything else, what's interesting is that you were teamed up with Visit Lauderdale. So you guys are kind of working together to do some cross promotions. Oh, yeah, uh, exactly. So this is uh, kind of the first year of this larger partnership between two LGBTQ plus uh, travel destinations and supporting each other um, across all platforms. They're both really exceptional destinations and trying to uphold each other as growing places for travel. Yeah. Well, totally makes sense. And yeah, uh, Richard Gray and Fort Lauderdale, they've been, they've been at it for a long time as well as you all have, but I love seeing you all together. And, um, but that's really it though, is that, is that I think, you know, growing up, uh, I'm in my mid fifties. So, uh, so I could say that, you know, growing up, it's always been in the, in the LGBT space, it's Palm Springs, Key West and Provincetown has, has always been kind of an anchor, but you guys have really maintained that over the years. And um, I, I take it part of it is because you're so good at really kind of getting the word out. Yeah, that's really what we're tasked with. We're the only local group that is focused solely on LGBTQ plus tourism. Yeah. And and what makes us, again, unique from like a typical chamber structure is that one of the ways in which we accomplish that marketing is through event production. Yeah. So the folks who know Provincetown uh, have heard of all of our theme weeks. You know, we have Women's Week, we have Bear Week, we have Women of Color Week, we have Pride Weekend, um, and the list goes on and on and on. And the PBG is responsible for five of those larger weeks. And it's one of the ways in which we put up the, the queer bat signal uh, yeah. to come and join us in town. Isn't it, isn't it so intense in the summertime that there's a certain point where the ferries are coming in from Boston and they cross over between Bear Week and some other, what one of your other events. And so you have this, this crossing of all the bears coming in and all, all the, the younger gays leaving or vice versa. And I, I hear some great stories about this. They definitely keep the ferries busy for sure. It's yeah, it's nonstop week after week, which is really exciting to you just have an onslaught of various different people and interests kind of cross mingling. Even during Bear Week, I do um, events in town as well for the queer and sapphically inclined under Babes and Boys. And we've hosted some really exciting events during Bear Week or Carnival or any theme week, which is really fun. So everyone is welcome to come to P-Town <laughs> at any given time. Absolutely. You know, we're we're accessible to every letter of the LGBTQ plus alphabet mafia at, at any moment. But, um, but it is really nice to kind of like elevate each kind of subculture um, and as you say, like the locals were, were so busy during the summer, you kind of forget what's coming next. And then you look up and you'll see, you know, 30 burly men with their, with their sweet little rolling bags coming down Commercial Street. And you'll see, um, you know, the 4th of July crew kind of rolling out at the same time. 
uh, and you'll know what's what's coming up next. Along with uh, Miss Richfield cruising right down the center yeah. of town. <laughs> beep, beep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Some of the businesses that are kind of anchors for, it, and that was an, it's not a pun when I say that, because one of them is crown and anchor, but and you have boat slip and you have a few that just really come to mind, but um, um, that's a big part of it. But are there others that are just like really, you know, some of the long-term dedicated to the LGBT uh, events and so forth that have been going on there? Well, you know, I, I think that because of our role, we have a, a large connection with a lot of the business owners, many of whom are LGBTQ plus and many of whom who are here because they understand the uniqueness of Provincetown, the importance of maintaining a 70 percent plus LGBTQ plus visitorship and that we have to work together in order to maintain that space. All of them are committed to that cause. And that's one of the reasons they support our membership. But, yeah. you know, the the in recent years, I feel like there's a lot of turnover in in both ownership as well as new businesses mm -hmm. that are cropping up. I, I actually moved here to help open up Provincetown Brewing Company, uh, which is right down the street from us. And yeah. they're open year round and are pretty dedicated to the culture of the community. And I, I think are a good representation of somebody who continues to participate and make sure they're contributing. I love hearing that. It, it shows. That's why I was asking because I see all these things, but I don't always know. I don't have the reference. I just know some of the, like the tea dance at Boat Slip that I think every <laughs> every gay man has been to at some point in his life. Um, I think another good call out is the Gifford House. Do you want oh, to yeah. share some of what's going to be? A lot of the younger, um, newer ownership, like Stephen at the Gifford House, really opens up a space to a wide variety of events. Um, and, and really an accepting space for, for everyone coming through. Um, I also love the Sea Glass Inn as one of the largest LGBTQ owned businesses in town, uh, female owned, and they've housed some really exciting things for us too, like a, the first um, queer and sapphically inclined pool party during carnival. Yeah. Uh, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of really amazing business owners and they've been supporting the LGBTQ plus um, economy and visitors all that. It's interesting though, when you, when I said, when I was at that, at your booth and I saw, and of course, visit Lauderdale, we talked about, but was, was fantastic was that I recognized some of the folks for, uh, from uh, Provincetown Tourism. And so you guys really work closely with, uh, with the tourism uh, department there as well. Yeah, they do. Tony Ficillo at the tourism office and, and Nina Cantor, his associate director, they do an incredible job of, of really marketing Provincetown more broadly you know, obviously there's a large imbrication of of who they're trying to reach and who we're trying to reach, but we're just kind of like a, a more focused and because we're not governmental, we're we're a not for profit. We're a little bit more nimble in terms of what um what we can be doing marketing wise. You know, we can be put you know, placing digital banners on scruff or grinder or um, you know, some some more like sub subculture spaces uh to really try and reach visitors where they're at. We'll say that since 1978, you've been you didn't need to ask anyone's permission. Exactly. <laughs> I love that, except for our except for our managing board. You know, we do have a board. One caveat. Yeah. <laughs> but even from your website, then I noticed that uh, right around the corner is Snowbound Leather Week. Is that the the first event coming up? Yeah, Snowbound uh, Leather Weekend is hosted by Mates, who also has Mates um, in the fall. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, as we mentioned earlier to you, uh, the population is around 3,500 during this time of year, but that doesn't mean that, that Provincetown is closed in any way. <laughs> like I said, a lot of the businesses are open, the art galleries, their shows being put on, um, I, Snowbound is a, is a great example of kind of one of the upticks in tourism during the winter. And one of the things that we like to highlight, because as we know, the rates in Provincetown have increased a lot in recent years, and um, some people find it more difficult to access an event like Fourth of July weekend or Bear Week. But you can, as an alternative, you can come in the shoulder season or in the winter season and come be with your LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters and connect with that community at a, at a far reduced rate. Yeah. I thought that was great. And then uh, but is Pride the first uh, first one kind of in the summer after all this uh, before Bear Week and everything else kicks in? Uh, yeah, we also have uh, Mems Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, uh, and Women of Color weekend, which happens around the same time as Pride. Um, and then, yes, Pride kind of jumpstarts a lot of large scale theme weeks from that point on. 
it's really interesting. It has sort of an interesting identity because it was it's it's relatively new. It's yeah. going into its seventh year this year. And there was kind of a running joke when it was started, like why the redundancy isn't isn't every day in Provincetown Pride. And really Carnival is the original sort of LGBTQ plus summer celebration for yeah. town. But what we found for Pride is that the folks who have never been to Provincetown are less familiar with the theme weeks and that culture. Um, they find Pride to be a really good entry point into what the province town experience is like. So organically, we've been bringing in, in a much younger set of travelers for that weekend, uh, uh, a, a lot more diversity, a lot more female representation, especially with the overlap with Women of Color weekend. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really excited by where Provincetown Pride is, is going because it gives us an opportunity to access um, new first time LGBTQ plus visitors. Yeah. And then um, even outside of the LGBT world, I know that, because um, everybody seems to work so closely together, <laughs> Provincetown is unique, um, but you have the, the International Film Festival, um, you have a food and wine festival, but you got some really major events that it seems like everybody kind of comes to. It's true. It keeps expanding the the off season too. So yeah, when it's yeah. seemingly quiet in previous years, the Food and Wine Festival is a great example of that in early November, kind of just started as a handful of events. And Matt King, who puts that on, gets a lot of support from restaurants that want to stay open just a little longer, inns that want to stay open as well. Yeah. Uh, and the ferry service, I believe, also expands through that weekend too. I'm looking forward to all this. I need to get back out there. It's been since 2012. My oh, husband my husband proposed to me in 2012 in Provincetown. So yes. at some point we're going to have to make it a, a reunion and a anniversary and come back there. Yeah, you have to tell us your, your story real quickly. And also just as a note, uh, this yeah. year is the 20th anniversary of uh, gay marriage legalization in Massachusetts, actually. Oh, wow. So we're going to be celebrating that a lot this summer, especially during Carnival. Yeah. Now, of course, it all made sense because uh, that was when uh, gay marriage was then uh, uh, legal in 2013. We got married that year. And so just knowing, you know, that was all coming along. So we decided uh, yeah, for the first time to make it all official. So yeah. Provincetown will always be near and dear to my heart for that reason. We'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for being here with us all and sharing a bit of kind of what, you, what you're all up to. And uh, like I said, look forward to being able to connect again in the real world. Yeah, we'll That's have to connect great. when you come down. I'd like that. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Feels good, so good.